And we're back live from the beautiful Mayakoba Resort just south of Cancun. And what a day. Round two has come to an absolute end. Neiman keeping his lead and John Rahm continuing with his debut with Legion 13. We're here to talk about that and more right here on Club 54 Post Show. Let's do it. Welcome to Club 54 Post Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and I couldn't be more proud to be a new member of the Live Golf family, but I'm actually more excited to introduce my special guest to start this show. You know him as CEO and Commissioner Greg Norman, but today you're serving as former number one in the world and analyst by my side. What, so, what did so I do like to that. get this honor, Greg? What is going on here? Well, I tell you what, Christian, it's an honor to have you. I know it's uh, it's just an incredible start to our season this year. There's a lot to talk about, obviously. So uh, right. let's have at it. I mean, everyone is excited about John Rahm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so cool. He's got this new sheriff in town energy. Um, I want you to talk about what you've taken away from the first two days. Well, take John out of it. I, I, I would talk about all 54 players, right? I mean, I think John obviously was a catalyst to see the stimulant that he created for the guys in the off season when he knew he, when they knew he was coming on board, actually elevated the, the the stature of making these guys perform a little bit better. Be focused. You know, you're coming out here now. You're getting one of the top two players in the world coming on joining. Um, but when I see John and the way he is going about things today, he continue on like John Rahm, right? He's not, it's not, doesn't matter where these guys play in the world, Christian, they're the best players in the world. Um, and the other 53 players are out there, just to see the performance of what they're doing out there on, up to, under today, especially around this golf course, and see the numbers they're putting up there is, I'm proud of them because I'm proud of the boys. I, I, I that's a great answer, Greg. I do want to bring up John Rahm a little bit more. Mm -hmm. People say he's the best in the world. You spent 331 days as the number one golfer in the world. Right. So my question to you is, you know how important it is to have the best of the best in the league. I want you to talk about his influence just joining this league. Well, a huge influence, right? It, it, it's, you know you're pushing each other. He's pushing other guys to be better now, right? He's pushing them to go out there and practice harder, perform better, focus in their off season, like I was mentioning about. But he's equally realizing now. For all the viewers out there who are understanding this, when you we look at the depth of our field, we have 15 to 20 guys that are always the highest performing guys in the game of golf. No, no slide on the other 30 odd guys, but when you're getting that quality of 20 deep every week, you know you've got to be 19, a minimum of 19 to get to that level. So adding John to it adds that additional flavor to it, adds that different, additional uh, strength and character and charisma that he draws and, um, and look, we've got, we're covered up with some wonderful, wonderful guys, right? But he just, Board a, a different level of enthusiasm and excitement to our league. Couldn't agree more, Greg. Let's take a look at the screen here of some reactions to John Rahm. Take a look. All right, so Rahm reactions on social. I, I, how are you on social, Greg? Do, do, you, do you ever respond back to uh, the, the fan every now and again when they reach out or what? I do, actually. I haven't done it lately, but I normally do. I like to engage with them as much as I can, but I don't do it as much as I should do, Christian. <laughs> that's, that's okay. You're busy doing many other things. Absolutely. Take a look here at some of the social responses. As you, as you can see, everyone is extremely excited. Uh, but we actually we have a special guest joining us, Greg, someone who had an incredible day. Hi, hey, Greg. How's hey, it going? Dean Burmester, thank you Thanks, so much man. for joining us. How's it going? How thank you. you. And welcome to the family, first of all. I haven't formally done that, so I, thank you. I appreciate that. Welcome thank to the you. Live family, man. Congrats on the day. Uh, why, why don't we start by you uh, taking us through your round today? Yeah, sure. Today was, um, today was a special day. I mean, it's just one of those days you wake up, body feels good, and... Um, you know, not quite from hole one, but from hole two, I just started to flush it and made a few putts. And when it's windy like this, you know, your ball striking has got to be top notch. Yeah, and no, I think uh, from a player's perspective, the, the, what people don't realize out there on television is the, the strength of this wind coming off the yeah. Caribbean Sea, right? It's a very heavy wind, right? So the spin and the, tra the flight trajectory, and these guys flight the ball. I mean, they play a lot of wind in South Africa. They play yeah. a lot of wind all over the world. So when he got out of bed this morning, knowing what he did and uh, needed to flight that ball down, and I watched you play it. Day. It was really yeah. impressive. Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, I hit, I hit some quality golf shots when I needed to, and um, you know I played the tough holes well, and that's what you need to do in 
in windy and tough conditions, you know. And being paired with, you know, DJ and, and Sebastian was, was great. They're both great guys and they're both quick players too, so it was nice and easy and free flowing for us. And, you know, there weren't too many mishaps. I think they both played pretty well and just got a little unlucky, but luck was on my side today, so I'll take it. Congrats. Uh, we actually have some highlights from today for you. Dean, yeah, if sure. you don't mind, though, take us, take us through that. Sure. Let's no check problem. it out. All right, here Have we go, Dean. Uh, yeah, that will obviously just pulled that one straight in. Uh, what was that on? I think that was, that was five. Oh, that was on five? Oh, there we go. This was a lovely little pitch into the par five, into seven. It was actually just a little bit of mud on my ball on the left. It looked like it was going to go in. and. You know, DJ is after me, also looked like he's going to win. This is eight. Just drew a half decent lie and pitched it exactly where I wanted to and found the bottom. That was kind of the momentum maker for me, really. Um, kept me kind of going. Um, you know, the other guys were playing great. And this is probably the best shot I hit all day. Little low flighted sawn off six Ooh, iron. Look at that. Into the wind. And uh, yeah, released up there to about six feet and obviously read it right and dropped it right in the middle. So yeah, that was. That was Hands down, probably the best shot I hit all day. Nice and smooth, and yeah, on 11 out the rough. I mean, others Bermuda, it's just guessing. Um, just trying to pitch it just over that bunker, and hopefully it holds the green. And yeah, luckily mine did. It landed soft and released up there to you know two, three feet. And you know, like I said, sometimes you got to get lucky when you're missing fairways with four irons. Luckily, there's a lob wedge in. Yeah, this was another. I mean, pure. I just try to keep my head down and keep my head still in the wind. Kind of widen my stance so I don't get blown around too much. That was a hell and, of a uh, shot to get it that close <laughs> on 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah, right behind it. I mean, I hit two on off the tee and nine on in from you know that'll give guys an idea how strong the wind was. I mean, it was 204 yards to the pin. Right. And I hit nine on. So you know, I'm playing for 30 yards of wind there with a nine on. So it was blown. Had a hell of a day, Dean. Yeah. Thank let's you. let's talk a little bit about team. There's been a lot of movement in the off season, but for you guys, you stuck together. Yeah. Talk about the team report. Oh, we, I mean, look, the team is the team is everything. You know, I know, you know Brandon's probably not having the best week. Shaul actually is showing signs of some form. Um, Brandon, myself, and Shaul spent a lot of time together in the offseason. And um, both guys actually have been playing pretty great. I mean, Brandon shot 10 under around, Bear, you know, Bears the other day. And I think Shaul shot 58 not too long ago uh, around Turtle Creek. So the guys are showing some signs of form. And I back my guys. You know, four scores to count tomorrow. I know Louis. You know, coming off, I think, you know, a few days practice, so that's pretty good for him. And he's, he's three under par, but he's the king of the wind, you know. You don't win the Open if you can't play in the wind. So, you know, I'm, I look, I back us tomorrow. I know um, we're probably a few out, five, four or five behind. I'm not sure exactly, but, you know, with four scores to count, anything can happen, and that's the new exciting format. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens tomorrow. Well, let's take a look at the screen here. We actually have something to show you. Can you answer this question? Because we got a question for you, Dean. Yeah. Who is the mass stinger? That's Louis. I mean, that, there's only one Louis West I mean, watch out! <laughs> As we call him now. He's changed his name, but yeah, he made me take that video in the locker room, and then our social media team got a hold of that, and that's what came of it. I mean, I think it's it's brilliant. So, so this wasn't your idea, but you were totally down to do it. Oh yeah, totally down to do it. I mean, I well, mean, what a man. Well, Christian, you got to understand this team here, the Stingers team, are really they take the Mickey out of everybody, right? And that, that's the great thing that people don't realize how great the league is and the family, the spirit. And uh, but these guys here, anybody from the Southern Hemisphere, they're 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 a different crew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we um, we enjoy ourselves. Let's put it that way. We know we know how to have a good time, and we certainly know how to give it to each other and uh, prank each other a lot. Can you can you explain the secret sauce? What do you what is the connector? Obviously golf, but yeah. what is it? I think sport sport in general, from where we come from, is just so massive for our country, South Africa. You know, yeah, you know, we're now four-time rugby world champions. No, don't get rubbed that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, no, I mean, come on out I'm now. just saying we wear a little a little <laughs> springbok on the back of our collar here, and then. We had Trickus Duplessis, who's now the UFC champion, a South African kid from, you know, just south of Johannesburg. So, you know, sport's in our veins and we support guys. You know, we're up three in the morning no matter where they play and we're watching. And um, hopefully we, we're we trying to do that for guys back in South Africa in yeah. the golfing world. Love to see it, Dean. All right, so we have this thing that we do on the show where we have guys basically form check fans swing. Okay. So not just you, Dean. Greg, obviously, we want to hear from you too. Yeah. Are you down to do this or what? Yeah, I'm down. All right, here's the first one, and be honest. Honesty makes this more entertaining. So I mean, don't hold back. His backswing's not too bad, but I mean, he could get on his left side. 
Gee, I, I don't see that going left. I'm not going to lie. I don't, he I don't he puts more left. weight on his right side at impact than anybody else I've seen. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, he needs to go to the physio. All right. It's a hip rotation. Here's another one. All right. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that's good motion. Oh, I love the little two-step. Yeah. Oh, he's got a little tiger two-step afterwards. This boy's got game. He's obviously off the He's lot. got a little swag to him, too, right? Yeah, oh, I like plane. <laughs> nice on yeah, plane nice. as well. Quick. Yep. All right, oh, here we go. Here's another. Okay. Bad well, posture, like number one. Too rounded. Yeah. Shoulders are too rounded, but we'll see. Oh. Good rhythm. Yeah. But yeah, stands a little too far away from it, and that's what Greg's saying. Shoulders are rounded. He's too far away from it. He's stretching for it. So All right. Much. We got one more. All right. Ooh. Oh. Ooh Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> oh, that, I can't see who that is. But he got it up and over the left. That's all I'm saying. I've been in there. That's not an easy toss. So, uh, Waco was on. in there today. I was with him. He hit it in there today. And Waco was in there. Uh, Waco drove it in there and uh, came out of it. And was just obviously hit a sandwich out and just made his birdie, routine birdie, out of the Sonorte. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a feature to have, yeah. isn't it? It's beautiful. Well, Dean, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on a great day today. We Thanks appreciate so much you and hope me. to see you back. Yeah, I, I, if I keep playing well, hopefully you'll have me back. <laughs> oh, we absolutely will, Dean. Thanks, and stick Thanks, around, Dean. guys. We're keeping the show going right here on Club 54 Post Show. Stick around. Mexico, I mean, it's, it's, it's like paradise, you know? We're, it doesn't get better than that to start the season. We are just about ready to go. And Mayako is a special place for me. It's where I feel, I guess, more emotions. Well, the home galleries loved that. It's the perfect scenario. You're going to go play golf to this paradise where so you're not playing golf, you're at the beach, you know, like it just doesn't get any better. So you don't even have to go in, but just sitting at the beach and hearing the sound, it's just something that makes it so much even nicer. I know my family and friends are here. Um, obviously, playing in front of my people. It just feels different, and I, I love that. I love going back because I feel that extra compromise to find a way to perform for, for these people. Starting in Mexico is a, it's a great spot, and I'm just pumped to compete, man. I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'm gonna say it a hundred times if I have to. Absolutely beautiful resort here in Mayakoba, just south of Cancun. I, 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 Looking at this shot right here, how beautiful this venue is, and uh, we're gonna talk to Greg about that a little bit later. I, I know you have a whole lot to do with that. <laughs> Stick around, we are here on Club 54 post show. Stay tuned. And look at that lovely crowd. We are continuing our show here, Club 54 Post Show. And I think I see Rachel down there in that crowd, checking in with Rachel Drummond. Rachel, what's going on? I can hardly hear. We're about to have the chain smokers. It's all kicking off, but I am joined by the one and only Ian Poulter. Just loves this phone. You've just been checking out your swing, haven't you? I, I have been checking out the swing, yeah, I have. Anything you've seen? Um, I mean, look, today, today was a pretty nice day, three on the par, but there was a couple of swings I made today, which was frustrating. Been working really hard in the off season on a, on a couple of different shots. Um, today would have accentuated people's mistakes, right? Into the wind, cross winds, in off the left, in off the right. And you had to kind of shape a couple of shots. So, um, you know, a couple of shots that annoyed me yesterday was my tee shot on one. I leaked it a bit to the right. It finished a, a, a foot out of bounds. And then today I overcompensated the other way and went, went way left. So, you know, I'm always just trying to tweak and make sure club is set in the right position at the top for me to obviously make a good pass at it on the way down. Now, your typical cool down, you've just mentioned a few technical things. Will you come here and start trying to feel out the feel you want for tomorrow? Well. I was quite happy with my round, so actually I'd gone back in the locker room when I was done for the day until you guys asked me to come back out. But anyway... And had a Sylvester. It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, you know, when you feel good and you're hitting it good, you don't need to do a lot. So you want to lean on the positive side of things. But since as you guys asked me to come out, 
it's you know it's it's nice just to hit a couple come on let's see with a bit you strive of, with i mean it's great right we got the music going in the background chain smokers are coming on i i can hit a couple of shots and get a great feel for tomorrow perfect while you're hitting yeah i just want to see you strike one first before my next question Yeah, that has not moved. While you're hitting, I've followed you your whole career, and the thing that really stands out to me is your mental game. You know, how have you built up the resilience? Any advice for people at home that struggle with their mental game when they play? Look, any, any amateur that plays a game of golf fights with themselves, right? They have a club in the bag, or they've got a certain yardage they don't like, or they dwell too much on the stuff, really, that doesn't really matter so I'm kind of like the glass is half full rather than half empty so I'm always leaning on the good stuff the good shot you've just hit don't worry too much on the bad stuff um, don't worry about the three footer that your mates just asked you to hold to win the match to obviously earn, a, earn 10 bucks or 20 bucks but um, you know we all, we all experience different kind of nerves at different times, and it makes people do funny things. Um, you know, I quite enjoy being under a lot of pressure and having to hit a shot that, um, that you might not like to hit because actually it really kind of, it focuses you really well into the shot you're gonna play. And what I don't like is hitting a shot where it's laying up on a par five because your mind wanders, you hit a poor shot. And Clarkey, who's on the bag, he's worked for some unbelievable players, Adam Scott, loads of multiple unbelievable players. How much does he help you get into the zone? It's our first week on the bag. Oh. Clarkey and I are, um, yeah, we're having, we're having um, I changed my caddy situation last year to this year. One of the caddies went to caddy for Richard Bland. He's obviously doing really well. The other one, uh, Terry, my, my long-term caddy, is caddying half for Sam. So Clarky lives 15, 10, 15 minutes from me in Orlando. And we've been able to, coming into this tournament, do some great work leading into this week. And that's really the plan for the whole of this year. Work really hard on course preparation um, to be able to come to a tournament and be ready to play golf. Now, Camp Confidential is one of the things that I loved watching. Yeah. This is almost like another Camp Confidential. I want the info. And also, Little Sticks. Yep. Now, you've got kids that are amazing players. Tell us yep. quickly about Little Sticks. Little Sticks is our charitable initiative. So, every single team will have, <clears throat> within their teams, their own charitable giving. So, for us, with Majestics, Little Sticks, we built not me, but the team have built an amazing curriculum which we're rolling out now in the UK and in the US in different territories. Um, we're very proud of our curriculum that, that, that we have and we've got a number of schools that are sampling it and test running it as, as the second half of last year Love it. and we've had some amazing results as well. So this isn't really to, to create and find the next you know, live superstar. This is, this is giving some certain kids an opportunity that they wouldn't normally have. This is taking them away from, you know, certain distractional things that they would normally find difficult um, and giving them just a different outlook and, you know, the amazing skills that we have and that we've learned in the game of golf through all the years of playing, the life skills that we, that we, that we have learned through all the years is amazing. You know, golf really does give back, and this is a, a great thing for us to have this, you know, initiative. And hopefully, we can roll it out to many more schools in the UK, and hopefully, we can take it around the world um, if people can actually see the full curriculum. So it's hard to explain to really get across what we're doing. Sounds but, great. Um, from within the school system itself. We're, we're making an impact, which is great. And in 10 seconds, advice to parents who've got kids that they want to be good at golf, what would your advice be? Let them go and have some fun. Love it. At the end of the day. Look, golf is a great game. It's become more accessible. It's becoming more and more accessible. Um, kids are enjoying this great game. So let them go and enjoy it and have fun and have fun with the whole family. Go on, show me another shot. One more. Can you hit a low one for me? One more. Because it's so windy out here. <laughs> 
Go on, how would you hit a low one and execute? I'm putting you under pressure. Okay. So ball's gone back in the stance. Back in the stance, love it. That is so good if you can't see the trace. Hulks, think of me tomorrow in your heads, putting you under pressure, hitting the low shot. Play well tomorrow. Low well burner. done today. Thank you. That was actually absolutely phenomenal, Rachel. Rachel right, Drummond, now let's get to the concert. Great job out there. <laughs> and as you can see, fans are watching and fans are excited. I saw a tweet, someone said, I don't care, I'm at work and I'm tuning in. <laughs> don't snitch. It was the best tweet I saw all day. So as you can see, fans are excited. And uh, if you hear a lot of music behind us, that's because there is the chain smokers are performing behind us. But those aren't the superstars I'm talking to right now. Please welcome <laughs> absolute superstar, live golf commentator, Dom. Dom I, think, I think this man's a superstar, not me, but <laughs> thank you for inviting me onto this set. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us. Now, you, you had the opportunity to uh, join some special guys all day long. Can you take us through your day today, Dom? I did. I was with John Rahm, uh, Laurie Cantor, and Richard Bland, who was, it's, it's, it was his birthday today, 51 years old. Amazing that he's still playing the sort of golf he is playing right now. Greg, by the way. Pretty good signing with John Rahm. Yeah, no, we've, we've talked about that, Dom. <laughs> really good signing. One thing I want to make, I'm going to ask you, right? We've, you've been around a lot of great golfers, right? The, to me, the impact, the sound of impact off John's club, take the driver away, but the iron is so hits everything so flush all it the is. time, right? It is. It's out of the middle of the club face. It's yeah. always on the sweet spot. I remember what you told me here last year. You designed this golf course that in a certain wind, mm -hmm. there's no hole that plays into the wind or straight downwind. It's always crosswinds, right. and you said you have to flight the ball to play this course well. And look at our leaderboard. Right. Neiman, Dean Burmester, and John Rum. These guys know how to flight the ball. It's so important around here. Isn't yeah, 100%. We talked to Dean about that. You knew when you came out here, one of his best shots he hit all day was a six iron, and he, on the 10th hole, he flighted it down. The penetration, you could see the ball flight. That's the art of knowing how to play the game of golf under tough conditions. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're going to take a look at some highlights from Rom since we're on the to topic. Take a look right here. He actually started off quite shaky. He didn't really play so well the first few holes, but uh, and his putting, his long putting was off pretty much all day. He was leaving himself a lot of four or five footers, but he made them. Take a look at that. I was looking for you, Dom, in that clip. I didn't see you over there. Where were you? <laughs> I've been told to stay out of camera many, many times. You did a good job. <laughs> All right. Uh, this was his birdie on 11. Yeah. I think he's going to be on the putting green today, working on his long putts this evening. He was very lucky on 13. He hit his tee shot right, and it was going to go into the mangrove, but it hit a spectator, and it kept it out of the playing area. He got a free drop off the cart path. Look at that. And of course, <laughs> this is the moment that we all talk about still to this day that we all love. I'm going to make a comment. Uh, <laughs> there's a picture up in the clubhouse with John and myself. The first PGA Tour event he ever played was right here at Mike Abar. The first yeah. live tournament event was right here at Mike Abar. And I've been wow. fortunate with him because, I mean, I've been involved with the players coming on board for, for quite a long time now. But the process I went through with John and Kelly uh, to, 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 for him to understand what live was all about, because there's so much white noise out there, Christian, with everybody hearing in different locker rooms around the world about the opposite side of live. And when you sat down with John, or I sat down with John, with a couple of other my colleagues, and we talked him through Liv, and we spoke about the one thing that we, we talked about is family, and you have a partner in life in Liv. Because we create this atmosphere here where you are a partner. You're not a pass-through entity in Liv. You, you become part of the family. We're going to grow. We're going to support. And, you know, especially when you're a captain and you have a piece of a team, uh, you're going to help that partnership. So we have a partner with the league, and we have a partnership with John and Legion 13. Uh, it, and it shows, Greg. It shows. Yeah. I, I, now, we were talking off camera, offline, about this beautiful course. I talked mm. offline about this also with Dom. I, I would love to hear your thoughts about the design of this course. And I know Dom also has some questions about it. 
Yeah, look, it's very unique. It's the only golf course I've ever designed. I've opened 121 golf courses around the world. It's got three ecosystems. As you come in the front gate, you go through the subtropical. Then you get into the mangroves, and then you hit the Caribbean Sea. You hit the beach and, 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 and the, that, that different character. And what people don't realize, about 40 or 50 feet above the tree line, and all the trees are about the same height, the heaviness of that wind that's about 90 feet to 100 feet above there when you, your ball hits that apex. So when I was dying, let's just take the fourth hole, the little par three out there. It's 110 yards plus or minus, right? I knew because of the amount of spin that goes on a golf ball with a pitching wedge or you know whatever it is, 50 degree, that backspin is going to be hitting the, that wind so hard. Yeah. And that to me is one of the hardest shots on this golf course, that to get a close. And very, very few people get a close on number four. It's a tough green now too. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I made some changes there. We made some subtle changes around here. We lengthened 18. We, we moved the green on uh, eight next to the Sonorte a little bit more to bring that into play. But, you know, we're, I was lucky when I designed this golf course. We designed it as a, a resort um, for high class resort golf, right? And it just, the art of designing a golf course to, is to cater for everybody. And when we first bought a, uh, a tour event here, it was just like, wow, the players loved it. They loved the layout of the golf course. And Dom hit the nail on the head. I walk every virgin site and I want to know where the prevailing wind's going to be in the middle of summer and the middle of winter and what the, how that transitions around. And so you want to make sure every player is tested to the, to the hilt. And so it, by making it Simple, right? It's um, it's a balance. And making it very difficult, that's an easy thing to do. Um, so I love this golf course. I, I really did enjoy playing it and I did enjoy building it. And the players love playing it as well. Too. I've always wanted to ask, I know course design is one of your passions, Greg. When you got here, was it all mangrove? It was all this, yeah. It was nothing but chit trees up here in the subtropical right here and there was nothing but mangroves. So how do you as a designer plot a routing. Okay, so the only road was down here to the south. Right. There was a dirt road that went from the main road down to the beach. So we just walked down that way and then we transitioned where we could. We got in a boat and we went through the waterways. Wow. Right? And then now we just work off the topography, the topo maps, and now, now we just map some of the mangroves you could not get through, yeah. right? There were snakes in here, there were crocodiles in here, there was everything in here. But when you can work your way, you identify what's the best way for infrastructure to get in from the main road, where you want the clubhouse to be, where the land planner is putting all the hotels are here. And now we go in there and we say, we recommend you do this, this, and this, and we'll give you a better place for this. So you work with the land planner, and you work with the civil engineer, and you work with the environmentalist to get make sure the mangroves were very, very sensitive. Um, we had to be very careful with that. We had an X amount we could do. That's why our corridors are so narrow. That's why, not this year, but we normally do wall-to-wall -wall grass here, uh, fairway grass. Uh, but, you know, these players are the best in the world, so I've decided to grow the rough in a little bit this year. Uh, we've certainly <laughs> done that. <laughs> There's not much fairway out there. Now, Greg, I think we actually found that photo that you were talking about earlier in the clubhouse. Uh, we got to take a look. Is yeah. that the oh. one you were talking that, about? This is the one. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is John as an amateur came here and played, and uh, that was the pro am night dinner, and that was the first time I'd met John. And and he finished tenth uh, that week. He, I think. He's a lot bigger guy now than what he was. Saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, Dom, we want to thank you so much for joining us, Greg. Thank you so much, and uh, here we go, guys. We're gonna keep this show going. Club 54 post show continues. Stick around. I'm headed right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's get into that show. <laughs> And we're here live from the beautiful Mayakova Resort. As you can see, the chain smokers are doing what they do best. And we just wrapped up round two. Let's take a look at Charles Howe III and what he did here last year. Check it out. It is the Charles Howe III show so far. One man atop the pylon, and it's Charles Howe III. Nicely done. Your man's putting on a clinic, bud. Yep. You know, to win and to win, uh, let's say, relatively early was big for me. Wonderful. Charles Howell the third. He was simply masterful today. Chucky just went to the lights up today. That was, that was sick. 16 yeah. under on this golf course for three days. 
That's you can't tell me he's one of the best golfers. He is one of the best. Joe Powell the third. No win is uh, easy or taken for granted, and that's this one surely wasn't. And we are back here live, Club 54 Post, with another absolute legend and special guest, Jerry Foltz, my pre-show host. You're a little loose with the legend with this guy standing between us, <laughs> calling me a legend. No, you're great. Thank you for joining us today, Jerry. How was your day? Oh, I didn't cuss once on the air, so I wow. still have a job for tomorrow. It was fantastic. I got to pound it out. You me. have to have small goals in this business, Christian. <laughs> now, Jerry, I asked you earlier today, Three takeaways from the day before. I'm going to ask you the same question right now as we close out day two. Three top three takeaways from today. Uh, well, first of all, John Rahm. He's tenacious. He's a he's an alpha dog, as we all know. And uh, he's he's here. He, his work is not done this week. His work won't be done until he retires from the game. Uh, he was very impressive today. Wako Neiman facing incredibly difficult conditions out there. Held his own very well. That's an exhausting round of golf when you're the only guy who tees off with something to lose and you're playing under these conditions on this guy's golf course, the way it's designed. It, uh, it can be totally exhausting and he's going to be feeling it tonight. And thirdly, and it's, be, it's not because my boss is standing here um, <laughs> and I'm sucking up, but I'm a fan of his designs hugely because there's a lot of subtlety involved. But the subtlety of this is that a lot of it's in the routing of this course because this is the wind that blows every day. And there isn't hardly a single hole that's directly in or directly down. He messes with their minds on purpose. Wow. So Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And uh, there's an art to screwing. Look, Pete, Pete, Pete. Pete. <laughs> well, no, what were you going to say? Say it. No, no, I was gonna say, say it. But Pete Dye once told me, and uh, I did a couple of collabs with Pete. He said, Greg, golfers love to be punished. If you build a boring golf course, they'll never come back. They'll play you one time. Build a golf course where they love to be punished and love to be tested, they'll come back and play. So, you know, Jerry, you've, you've played golfers a, a lot like I have, right? So the art of understanding at a golf course as a player as you're coming into it, in your day, what was your approach to it? How did you go into it? Well, ideally, I mean, if my game were cooperating, which it rarely did, not like yours, uh, from the green backwards was always right. the way I approached it. And, uh, and trying to get myself in position to be in the best position up there from back here. Right. What about you? Yeah, no, uh, pretty much the same way. I played the golf course from the green to the tee because you knew, knew where you wanted to put the fairway. One thing, I walked to, I walked today for the front nine holes and watched the, the last group, uh, Waco and Sergio. And it's interesting to me how early on the guys miscalculated the wind. And it's not hard to figure out the wind, right? So on the first hole and the second hole and the third hole, I'm watching these guys and, and Patrick Reed. And I'm going, how do they not know the wind is a little bit more out of the south than where they are playing it? And I thought, okay, that, that to me is go back and do your homework, right? So study what, how you play those couple, first couple of holes because if you get off to a slow start, it's hard to get yourself back into gear and understand how to play the golf course to get going. So. Tomorrow it's all about, you know, I don't know, is the weather forecast the same tomorrow? Uh, uh, 10 to 15 west-southwest, same okay. direction, lighter winds. Yeah. Right. Well, Greg, I think we, we have a picture of you uh, playing here. Do you think you miscalculated the win on this one? I, uh, I bet no, no. no. Look, I hit that dead down the middle. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell here. Yeah. He hit everything down the middle. Christian, a quick little sidebar. I played the Australian tour for a season in 1988-89. He was at the height of his powers back then, and uh, he played quite a few events. I knew his practice routine, and if it coincided with my tee times, every day after a round of golf, competitive golf, he'd hit one bucket of balls minimum, usually the same amount, about 60 balls, with sometimes Stevie Williams out there catching them for him because we had to shag him, and other times there was a regular driving range, and I would quietly sneak up 20 or 30 yards and sit there and watch him, see if I could learn anything, or osmosis, it would, wow. it would wear why, off why on didn't me. You, why didn't you come up and ask me a question? Wow. I've asked you. I, <laughs> there were plenty of other guys wanting a piece of your time back then. You didn't need some little low life from Vegas asking you questions, but uh, it was the most impressive driving of the golf ball, and everybody who knows him and his history will. He's the greatest driver of the golf ball in the modern game. Wow. Well, one of the things, just touching on that, uh, the art of flighting the golf ball, there was one trip.
tree at Royal Queensland Golf Club where I used to grow up practicing, right? Just like a little bit here, like your palm tree. And I used to try and trim, trim a branch, a broken branch off the tree with the ball. I'd aim it at a one inch wide branch. I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that. That's how I got the art of flighting golf ball. With bladder golf balls in Basima Golf Club, you had to hit the ball. Actually, today I was... Um, who I won't give away the name because I was talking about golf on the golf course. And um, they said, well, what did you do in your day with the Ballada ball? I said, the only thing I thought about was make sure I made square impact every time, square impact, because that club face is a little bit off angle. This wind is going to exacerbate it even more. So the only thing I put in my mind and visualized, square at impact, square at impact, and everything else should take care of itself. Well, Greg, you've been absolutely phenomenal. I got to say thank you so much for joining our show today. Thank you. You've been great. Guys, take a look at this image here on the screen. And Greg, once again, thank you so much for your time. Those are the boys there. As you can see, a beautiful shot from way up top of the beautiful resort here in Mayakoba. And here are the standings here. And Jerry's standing here with me. Jerry, you want to help me talk through What a day. Look at this. Yeah, and like I said, Joaquin Neiman, uh, it's an exhausting round under tough conditions. It was tough for everybody. But tomorrow, I mean, he's a world-class player, no question about it. And uh, probably if if there was legitimate rankings with the way he's playing right now and the way he's performed in the top 20 to top 25 in the world, tomorrow he's going up against a guy who's arguably the best player in the world, who's an intimidating figure. I know you guys probably already talked about this in your interviews, but an intimidating figure walking onto that tee and a presence and an aura about John Rahm. And that is a that's a tough one to tackle. I think he's focused enough to where he's going to be able to handle it. And Dean Burmester in the mix as well, who has that South African mentality where I don't really care who you are. I just, the golf ball doesn't know who's hitting it. I just want to go beat you. <laughs> That's great. So we actually ha have an image coming up that I want to hear you talk about. But my last question to you is biggest prediction for tomorrow. What would you say? Hold on. Before you answer that, take a look at this in just a moment. All right, here it is. Let's take a look at this, a tweet. And as you as you know, guys, we put a lot of tweets up here. We put a lot of Instagram posts up here. If you call yourself a fan, post as much as you can and tag us. We'll be glad to take the content. We love to talk about it. What do you think about this, Jerry? Yeah, big John <laughs> Riley. He's absolutely right. John Rahm is a legend in the game already, and he's just getting started proving things in this game, I can promise you. So let's talk about tomorrow. Okay. Neiman, does he hold it? Does he keep it together? Does he... How does he finish tomorrow? I don't think he's going to I don't think he's going to lose the tournament. Somebody else, one of the other two, and it'd have to be one of those other two. If he yeah. doesn't lose the tournament, if he doesn't come backwards, one of those other two guys in his final group, Rom or Burmester, have to come out and really win it with a super deep score with a really low round. But uh, one prediction, I don't know if it's a prediction, one thing I'm on the lookout for yeah. tomorrow is Legion 13. Yeah. I mean, you got two world class players in Rom and Hatton. What they do on the golf course is not a surprise. The second best score on their team right now is Caleb Surratt. He's 19 years old. Fortunately, if Legion 13 wins, we're in Mexico. He can legally celebrate, I believe, with the team. <laughs> there you I go. mean, the guy's six years away from being able to rent a car. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind getting the invite for that. Yeah, Harry. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do want to talk a little bit more about tomorrow. What does the last day, the last round, typically look like amongst these guys? Well, it's. Are it's, we going to see him? lay off a little bit or is this no. the moment where they go hard no the structure of live, of live golf is pretty much pedal to the metal to use a worn out cliche from the get-go 54 holes it's a sprint it's not a marathon in golf terms that is uh i don't see anybody coming i mean really playing conservative golf at any point unless somehow one of them most likely neiman has a three four five shot lead coming down the difficult hole 16 17 and 18. then you'll put the muffler on it a little bit but other than that not really i absolutely love this tweet here very impressed with the legion of doom oh. and their captain johnny rom the <laughs> they're of knocking doom. at that door early and you just agreed with that so let's talk teams are yeah. there any teams a little under the radar that you're impressed by? Uh, well, that one. That to me, yeah. that's under the radar. You got two sure. proven, uh, unproven professionals, two world-class players, yeah. but two unproven professionals. Uh, Kieran Vincent is the other one. He just turned pro less than a year ago, I believe it was, and all four scores count tomorrow. So any weakness on a difficult course is going to be exposed. That's why I think Crushers and Sting are lurking there, still have a really good, legitimate chance.
All right, well, only time will tell, Jerry. And there's the leaderboard as you see it. Let's take a look at some off-season moves that have been made. Check it out. With the movements in the off-season, the trade window, you know, some teams have kind of retooled. We had threads going about it amongst ourselves. Who's going where and what's going on? I think, uh, you know, Varner for Uline in the four races, that, that was a surprising one to me. Yeah, I thought, you know, really long and hard for about three minutes, and I'm like, yeah, I want Harold on the team. Did I want to leave? Man, I could start right now. David brings a lot to the team. He's got tremendous talent. He hits the ball a mile, great hands around the greens, a lot of confidence. I think he brings youth, uh, enthusiasm. Uh, he brings a lot of, a lot of power. It was a difficult call and a difficult decision. You know, not, I love my other team, but these are these are my boys. You know, these are the people I was already traveling with, and now we're finally together. I think Carlos going to talk. I think they're going to be a really strong team this year. They played real last year, and I think they're going to be better this year. Right off the surface, I've always wanted Wolf. I believe in what he can do. I said yes immediately because it sounded like an unbelievable gig for me, and uh, with Peter joining the team as well, it was it was a no-brainer. The next team that's going to get their nose up there now with the trade to smash, if I had to pick one team. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. If you've got an opportunity to get Taylor Gooch, you go get him. Yeah, this offseason made a little change. No longer wearing pink this year, and uh, hopefully for a long time moving forward, we're going to be with Smash. A whole lot of movement there, and look at this. Trade alert. What would you say about this one, Jerry? Well, that's two guys who could play with any team because they're both two really, really well-liked guys. Not going to be a whole lot of personality cla clashes with Peter Uline and anybody. He just gets along with everybody. Uh, Harold Varner may be a little stronger personality. He's very outgoing, very extroverted, and I think he fits in really well with Dustin Johnson's four aces because Dustin is uh, hes not an uh, introspective type of guy it's per se, but he's certainly not an extrovert in terms of the way I think he's the cheerleader for that team, and that is a proven team, a powerhouse team, and uh, I, I really like that trade a lot for both teams. I think they both came out with somebody who can really help their team, and I think Peter Uline uh, being friends with Matthew Wolf and, uh, and uh, Oklahoma State alums together, I think that's really going to help bring out the best in a young man who has uh, the world uh, the world as his oyster potential-wise in Matthew Wolf. Well, I love to see the trade that always keeps everything interesting. So. I think this is uh, Dean out here. We got to talk to him a little bit earlier today. And look at this. What a cute little moment. That's adorable. Look at this. It's like, Dad, this is fun. Cool seeing you. But when's Mom going to take me back to the beach? It's always good to get some uh, wholesome content in there. So why not? We got to throw that Someday in. that young man will be asked, when did you fall in love with the game? And <laughs> we'll bring back this video. <laughs> All right, Jerry, let me ask you a few more questions before we get out of here. I want to see your action on the range. You, you want to see that? See, it's not as good as this little range. kid, so I'll tell you that. <laughs> not as good. <laughs> uh, a couple more questions before sure. we get out of here. First, thanks for joining. My pleasure. Okay. You are the master of the storylines. I mean, you can break everything down. You could look at that tree right now, probably, and tell me something about it. No, you don't David, have to. David's the tree guy. <laughs> he could name the, the uh, make or whatever you call it, the origin of it. <laughs> to me, they're just obstacles. So I, I, as the days go by, the story shifts a little bit, right? Yeah. Coming, yeah, out, coming yeah. out of today, would you say there's any shift of story that you're interested in here? No. I know that's a tough one. No, no too, it, it might be too soon, too early to ask. Not at all. Not at all. I, I mean, the shift in the story was I didn't expect Legion 13 to be there. That, yeah. But that we've already touched on that. Um, some of the players who struggled today, I didn't expect to struggle. Oh, I've already mentioned him, Peter Uline. He's behind us hitting balls right here, and he happens, well, he just left, thank goodness, because he's hitting on the left side of the range, and his miss is a low pull, which could just really knock one of us out. But uh, he struggled this week, and he was in contention last year until some kind of spirit or ghost got him on the 12th tee, where he hit a small bucket off the tee, lost the tournament there, came back really strong. I expected him to play really, really well. but. Um, the cool thing, the really, really cool thing about live golf and the format is if, yeah. if these guys are playing regular tour golf and they play poorly, they tee off early tomorrow, they're making $10 birdies, they don't really care. They basically, you can find yourself mailing it in because there's always next week, always next week. That ain't the case. You're right. playing for your team tomorrow. All four scores count. 
everything you do matters to guys who you care about. And that is a whole different focus in the game of golf and what really brings the team element of Live Golf right to the forefront and, and makes this a true sporting league. Absolute game changer. You give me chills when you talk about oh. it. <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a look. We actually are going to toss this uh, tag board again. We love the social here as we close out. I think that's Arlo White's room. This was in our group chat. Do you remember this, Jerry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was, <laughs> that's a raccoon. That's not a kawadi, uh, we're told. And uh, Is it a raccoon? That That is one brave raccoon. I wouldn't walk into that room for anything. So the funny part about this video uh, is you can't, you can't hear the audio, but Arlo is so relaxed. He's like, hey, little buddy. Like, I would be freaking out if this thing was in my room, not Arlo White. I, I think the Sauvignon Blanc had already, <laughs> or he, he probably thought it was a princess. <laughs> But uh, we're told those things can actually take those little bags of snacks that they put on the top right above where that where yeah. was looking and actually open them up and eat them. <laughs> no yeah. way. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'll, I'll, keep that, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a look at this leaderboard again. You know, I, I, I really only have a couple things to ask you left before we get out of here. No but worries. let's just talk tomorrow. You know, yeah. as, as you're looking at this leaderboard, what, what comes to mind as you're thinking about how things will transpire? Well, what comes to mind is just a smile, actually. Uh -huh. and, uh, internally and externally, you got Joaquin Neiman, awesome player, just won the Australian Open. He's won a lot of stuff, former Latin America amateur champion, which got him into the first Masters. And unfortunately, due to the political system and environment regarding the stronghold that the OWGR keeps uh, to kind of hurt our players, he's not even invited this year. And it's not a true world class, not the best field they could possibly put on their golf course without an invitation to him. Then you got Masters champion, major champion. Then you got Burmester. Then yeah. you got Masters champion. Then you got <laughs> Brooks Kepka, PGA champion reigning. Patrick Reed, former Star Masters champion. Star studded lineup. Down and down and down. So many major champions on that. Most of them. Are, yeah, and yeah. those were our individuals. And here are the team leaders. Uh, does this also make you happy just to see 13 uh, teams here competing in well, Live Golf well, League? Well, my team that I have an affinity for, Smash GC, played really well for two days. I'm happy to see that. Crushers, I picked to win this week. They're right there. Stingers right there. They've been very solid. It's, it's a true four-man deep team. And uh, But I think, I think a lot of curiosity is going to be out there tomorrow following Legion 13. Well, we just wrapped up day two, round two. Jerry Fultz, thank you so much for joining My pleasure, us here C -square. on Club. I love that nickname. C -square. On Club 54. We'll see you guys at the next show tomorrow. We have our pregame and our post, and we hope to see you there live from Mayacoba Resort. Thank you guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Adios. <laughs>